Hello! And welcome to part two of Song of Myself. This starts at line 562. Song of Myself by Walt Woman from the book Leaves of Grass. Dazzling and tremendous, how quick the sunrise would kill me if I could not now and always send sunrise out of me. We also ascend dazzling and tremendous as the sun. We found out our soul in the calm and cool of daybreak. My voice goes after what my eyes cannot reach. With the twirl of my tongue I encompass worlds and volumes of worlds. Speech is the twin of my vision. It is unequal to measure itself. It provokes me forever. It says sarcastically, Walt, understand enough. Why don't you let it out then? Come now, I will not be tantalized. You conceive too much of the art articulation. Do you not know how the buds beneath are folded? Waiting in the gloom, protected by frost, the dirt receding before my prophetical screams, I underlying ca causes to balance them at last. My knowledge, my live parts, it keeping tally with the meaning of things, happiness, which whoever hears me, let him or her set out in search of this day. My final merit, I refuse you. I refuse putting from, from me the best I am. Encompass worlds, but never try to encompass me. I crowd your noisiest talk by looking toward you. Writing and talk do not prove me. I carry the plenum of proof and everything else in my face. With the hush of my lips, I confound the topmost skeptic. I think I will do nothing for a long time, but listen. Accrue what I hear into myself, and let sounds contribute toward me. I hear the bravados of birds, the bustle of growing wheat, gossip of flames, clack of sticks, cooking my meals. I hear the sound of human voice, I sa a sound I love. I hear all sounds as they are tuned to their uses, sounds of the city and sounds out of the city, sounds of the day and night, talkative young ones to those that like them the recitative of fish peddlers and fruit peddlers, the loud laugh of work people at their meals, the angry bass of disjointed friendship, the faint tones of the sick, the judge with hands tight to the desk, this shaky lips pronouncing a death sentence, the hev o yo of Steve Dorse, Unlading ships by the wharves, the refrain of the anchor lifters, the ring of alarm bells, the cry of fire, the whir and swift streaking engines and hose carts with preminority tinkles and colored lights, the steam whistle, the solid roll of the train of approaching cars, the slow march played at night at the head of the association, they go to guard some corpse. The flag tops are draped with black muslin. I hear the violin cello, or man's heart complaint, and hear the keyed cornet, or else the echo of sunset. I hear the chorus. It is a grand opry. This indeed is music. A tenor large and fresh as the creation fills me, the orbic flex of his mouth is pouring and filling me full. I hear the trained soprano. She convulses me like the climax of my love grip. The orchestra whirls me wider than Uranus flies. It wrenches and unmaims our doors from my breast. It throbs me to gulps the farthest down whore. It sails me. I dab with dare feet. They are licked by the indolent waves. I am exposed, cut by bitter and poisoned hail, stepped amid honeyed morphine. My windpipe 
sneezed in the fakes of death. Let up again to feel the puzzles of puzzle and that we call being. All right, this next stanza is like really small, but real quick. You see, you see that? That's, that's, I'm gonna have to make up some words. <laughs> to be in any form, what is that? If nothing lay more developed, the Kohag and its callous shell were enough. Mine is no callous shell. I have instant conductors all over me whether I pass or stop. They seize every object, lead it harmlessly through me. I merely stir, press with my fingers, and am happy to touch my person, soul, one else's about as much as I can stand. Is this then a touch? Quivering me to a new identity? Flames and either making a rush of my veins? Treacherous tip of me reaching a crowding to help them? My flesh and blood playing out lightning to strike what is hardly different from myself? On any side, propuant provocateurs stiffening my limbs, straining the utter of my heart for its withheld drip, behaving lechous toward me, taking no denial, depriving me of my best as for a purpose, unbuttoning my clothing, clothes, and holding me by the bare waist, deluding my confusion with the calm of the sunlight and pasture fields, immodestly sliding the fellow senses away, they bribed to swap off with touch and go and graze at the edges of me. No consideration, no regard for my draining strength or my anger, fetching the rest by the herd around to enjoy them a while, then all untying to stand in a headland and worry me. The centuries desert ever over part of me. They have left me helpless to a red marauder. They all come to the headland to witness and assist against me. I am given up by traitors. I walk wildly. I have lost wits. I, and no one else, am the greatest traitor. I went myself first to the headland. My own hands carried me there. You villain touch! What are you doing? My breath is tight and its throat unclenched for your floodgates. You are too much for me. Blind, loving, rustling touch, sheethead, hooded, sharp tooth touch, did it make you ache so leaving me, partaking, tracking by arriving, perpetual payment of perpetual loan, rich showering rain, and recompense richer afterward, sprouts take and accumulate, stand by the curb, prolific and vital, landscapes protected masculine full-sized and golden. All truths wait in all things. They neither hasten their own delivery nor resist it. They do not need the abstract forceps of the surgeon. The is insignificant is as big to me as any. What is less or more than touch? Logic and sermons never conceive. The damp of the night drives deeper into my soul. Only what proves itself to every man and woman so. Only what proves itself to every man and woman is so. Only what nobody denies is so. A minute and a drop of me is settled my brain. I believe the soggy clod shall become lovers and lamps and compound compens is the meat of the man or woman and summit and flower there is feeling they have for each other and they are branch boundless out of that lesson until it becomes omnific and until everyone shall delight us and we them I believe a leaf of grass is no less than the journey work of the stars. 
and the piss mire is equal perfect, and grain of sand and egg of the wren, and the tree toad is chieft o devour, for the highest and the running blackberry would adorn the parlors of heaven, and the narrowest hinge in my hand puts to scorn all machinery, and cows crouching with depression head surpasses any structure, and mouse is miracle enough to stagger sextillion of infidels, and I could come every afternoon my life to look at the farmer's girl boiling in her iron tea scuttle and baking shortcake. I find I incorporate genus and coal and long thread moss and fruits and grains and esculate roots, and I am stuccoed with quadrupeds and birds all over, and I have distanced what is behind me for good reason, and I call anything close again when I desire it. In vain the speeding of shyness, in vain the platonic rocks send their old heat against my approach, in vain the ma in vain the mastodon retreats beneath its own powdered bones, in vain objects stand leagues off and assume manifold shapes, in vain the ocean settling in hollows and the great monsters lying low. In vain the buzzard houses herself in the sky. In vain the snake slides through the creepers and logs. In vain the elk takes the inner passes of the woods. In vain the razor-billed auk sails far north t to Labrador. I follow quickly. I ascend to the nest of the fissure of the cliff. I think I could turn and live a while with the animals. They are so placid and self-contained. I stand and look at them sometimes, half the day long. They do not sweat and whine about their condition. They do not lie awake in the dark and weep for their sins. They do not make me sick discussing their duty to God. Not one is dissatisfied. Not one is demented with the mania of owning things. Not one kneels to another nor his kind that lived thousands of years ago. Not one is respectable or industrious over the whole earth, so they show their relations. Ugh. So they show their relations to me, and I accept them. They bring me tokens of myself. They events them plainly to their possessions. I do not know where they got those tokens. I must have passed away untold times ago. I do not know where they got those tokens. I must have passed that way untold times ago, and nagantly dropped them. Myself moving forward then and now and forever, gathering and showing more always with the velocity, infinite and omnigenous, and the like of these among them. Not too exclusive toward the reachers of my remembrance. Picking out here one that shall be my Amy, choosing to go with him on brotherly term, a gigantic beauty of stallion, freshly and responsive to my caress, head high in the forehead and wide between the ears, limbs glossy and supple, tail dusting the ground, eyes well apart, full of sparkling wickedness, ears finely cut and flexibly moving, his nostrils dilate, my heels embrace him, his well-built limbs tremble with pleasure, we speed around the return. But I use you a moment, and then I resign you, stallion, and do not need your paces to outgallop them. And myself, as I stand or sit, pass faster than you. Swift wind, space my soul, now. I know it is true what I guessed at, what I guessed when I loafed in the grass, what I guessed when I lay alone in my bed, and again what I, as I walked the beach under the paling stars in the morning. My ties and ballasts leave me, I travel, I sail, my elbow rests in the sea gaps, I skirt the sea. I skirt the sea. <laughs>
What are you doing? Don't rub on that. Don't, don't set my microphone falling. You just really want attention. Is that what I guessed? Oh yeah? Yeah, those headphones, don't eat that. Why can't you just sit in the chair? You have like, you're walking on like an inch of desk. You are, you are going to fall. Yeah, you might fall. I'm busy. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm busy. I can pet you later. Yeah, don't rub on. That's my cord. That's my cord to the camera. Don't. Good. What was talking? Something about nips. Parsips? Partsnips? My ties and ballasts leave me. I travel. I sail. My elbows rest in the sea gaps. I skirt the sarias. My palms cover continents. I am afoot with my vision. By the city's quadrangular houses, in log huts or camping with lumbermen, along the roads of turnpike, all along the dry gulch and the revolt bed, hewing my onion patch and rows of carrots and parsips, crossing savannas, trailing in forceps, percepting, gold digging, girdling the trees of the new purchase, Scorched ankle deep by the hot sand, hauling my boat down the shallow river, where the panther walks to and fro on a limb, overhead, where the buck turns furiously at the haunter, where the rattlesnake suns its flabby length on a rock, where the otter is feeding on fish, where the alligator in its tough pimples sleeps by the bayou, where the black bear is searching for roots or honey, where the beaver parts the mud and his paddled tail, over the growing sugar, over the cotton plant, over the rice as its low moist field, over the sharp peaked farmhouse with its scalloped scum and slender shoots from the gutters, over the western per over the western persimmon over the long-leaved corn and the delicate blue flaxed flax over the white and brown bucket wheat a hummer and a buzzer with the rest over the dusty green of the rye and its ripples and shades in the breeze scaling mountains pulling myself cautiously up holding on by low, scaggered limbs, walking the path worn in the grass and beat through the leaves of the brush where the quails is whistling betwixt the woods and the wheat lot, where the bat flies in the July eve, where the great gold bug drops through the dark, where the flails keep time in the barn floor, where the brook puts out the roots in the old tree and flows to the metal, where the cattle stand and shake away flies with the tremorous shuddering of their hides, where the cheesecloth hangs in the kitchen and a endrins straddle the hearth slab of the cobwebs fall in the festins of the rafters, where the trifammers crash, where the press is whirling its cylinders, where the human heart beats with terrible throws out of its ribs, where the pear-shaped balloon and it's floating aloft, floating in it myself and looking at the composed, floating in it myself and looking composedly down, where the life car is drawn on the slip nose, where the heat hatches pale green eggs in the dented sand, where the she-whale swims in her calves and never forsakes them, where the steamship trails hideways, its long pennant of smoke, where the ground shark's fin cuts like a black chip out of the water, where the half-burned brig is riding on its unknown currents, where the shells grow to her slimy deck 
and the dead are corrupting below, where the stripped and starred flag is borne at the head of the regiments. Approaching Manhattan, up by the long stretch island, under Niagara, the cataract falling like a veil over my countenance. Upon a doorstep, upon horse block of hard wood outside, upon race course or enjoying picnics or jigs, or a good game of baseball, at he festivals with blackguard jibs and ironclad lenses, and bowl dances and drinking with laughter, at the cider mill tasting with sweet of the brown squash, sucking the juices through a straw, at apple peeling wanting kisses for all the red fruits I find, at musters and beach parties and friends friendly bees, and husking and house raising. There is a mockingbird sounding his delicious grungles and crackles and screams and weeps where the hay rick stands in the barnyard and the dry stalks are scattered and the brow crow awaits in the hovel where the bull advances to do his masculine work and the stud to the mare and the cock is treating the hen where the heifers browse and the geese nip their food with their short jerks where the sundown shadows lengthen over the limitless and lonesome prairie where the herds of buffalo make crawling spread of the square miles far and near where the hummingbird shimmers where the neck of the long-lived swan is curved with wing where the laughing gull scoots by the slappy shore and laughs her near human laugh where the beehives range in a gray bench with the garden half hid in the high weeds, where the band-necked partridges roost in a ring on the ground with their head out, where the burial coaches enter the arch gates of a cemetery, where the winter wolves bark amid the wastes of snow and isolated trees, where the yellow-crowned heron comes to the edge of the marsh at night and feeds upon the small crabs, where the splash of swimmers and divers cools the warm noon, where the katydid works her chromatic reed in the walnut tree over the well, where the patches of citrons and cucumbers with silver-wired leaves, where the salt lick or orange glade or un conical firs through the gymnasium through the curtained saloon through the officer or public hall pleased with the native and pleased with the foreign pleased with the new and old pleased with the woman and the homely as well as the handsome pleased with the quackeress pleased with the quakeress as she puts off her bonnet and talks melodiously, pleased with the primitive tunes of the choir of the whitewashed church, pleased with the earnest words of the sweating Methodist, preacher or any preacher, looking seriously at the camp meeting, looking in at ship windows in Broadway, the whole forenoon, pressing the flush of my nose to the thick plated glass, Wandering the same afternoon with my face turned up to the clouds, my right and my left rounds, sides of two friends, and I in the middle, coming home with the bearded and dark-cheeked blushing boy, riding behind him at the drape of the day, far from the settlements, studying the print of the animal's feet or the moccasin's prints by the cot in the hospital, reaching lemonade and feverish patient by the coffined corpse when all is still examining with candle is there anything better than water for public speaking I celebrate myself 
and what I assume you shall assume, for every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you. I loaf and invite my soul, I lean and loaf at my ease, observing a spear of summer grass. Houses and rooms are full of perfumes, the shelves are crowded with perfumes. I breathe the fragrance myself, and know it and like it. The distillation would intoxicate me also, but I shall not let it. The atmosphere is not perfume. It has no taste of distillation. It is odorless. It is for my mouth forever. I am in love with it. I will go to the bank by the wood and become undigested and naked. I will go to the bank by the wood and become undisguised and naked. I am mad for it to be in contact with me. The smoke of my own breath echoes, ripples, and buzzed whispers. Love root, silk thread, crotch and vine, my respiration and inspiration, the beating of my heart, the passing of blood and air through my lungs, the sniff of green leaves and dry leaves, and the shore and dark-colored sea rocks and of hay of the barn, the sound of the bleached words of my voice, works loosed to the eddies of the wind, a few light kisses, a few embraces, a reaching around of arms, the play of the shine and the shade on the tree as the supple boughs wag, the delight alone in or in the rush of the streets or along the fields and hillsides, the feeling of health, the full noon trill, the song of me rising from bed and meeting the sun. By the cot in the hospital reaching lemonade and feverish patient, by the coffin corpse when all is still examining with a candle, voyaging to every port and diker and adventure, hurrying with the modern crowd as eager and frickle as any hot toward one I hate, ready in my madness to knife him, solidarity at midnight in my backyard, my thoughts gone from me to a long while, walking the old hills of Judea with the beautiful gentle god by my side, speeding through spice, speeding through heaven and the stars, speeding amid the seven satellites and the road ring and the diameter of 80,000 miles, speeding with the tailed meteors, throwing fireballs like the rest, carrying the crescent child that carries its own full mother in its belly, storming, enjoying, planning, living, cautioning, backing and filling, appearing and disappearing, I tread day and night such roads. I visit orchards of God and look at the spherical product and look at quintillion rip ripened and look at quintillions green. I fill the flight of the fluid and swallowing soul. My course runs below and sounding of plummets. I help myself to a material and immaterial. No guard can shut me off. No law can prevent me. I anchor my ship for little while only. My messengers continually curse away and bring their returns to me. I go hunting polars, furs, and the seal, leaping chasms with spike-pointed staff and clinging to topless brittle and blue. I ascend the foretruck. I take my place late at night in the crow's nest, and we sail through Arctic sea. It is plenty light enough. Through the clear atmosphere I stretch around on wonderful beauty. The enormous masses of ice pass me and I pass them. The scenery is plain in all directions. The white-topped mountains point up to the distance. I fling out my fancies toward them. We are about to approach some great battlefield in which we are soon to be engaged. We pass the colossal outpost, the encampment. We pass with stiffened feet and caution. We are entered by the suburbs, some vast and ruined city, the blocks and fallen architecture more than all the living cities of the globe. 
I am a free companion. I bavuk by invading watchfires. I turn the bridge room out of the bed and stay with the bride myself and tighten her all night to my thighs and hips. My voice is the wife's voice, the screech by the rail of the stairs, the fetching my man's body by dropping and drowning. I understand the large heart of heroes, the courage and present times and all times, how the skipper saw the crowded and rudderless wreck of the ship and death and chasing it up and down the storm. How he knuckled tight and gave not back one inch, and faithful of days and faithful of nights, and chalked in large letters on board, be of good cheer, we will not desert you. How he stayed the drifting company at last, how the lank, loose-gowned woman looked when boated from the side of her prepared graves, how the silent, old-faced infants and the lifted sec and the sharp-lipped, unshaven men, all this I swallow, and it tastes good. I like it well, and it becomes mine. I am man. I suffered. I was there. The disdain and calmness of martyrs, the mother, and condemned for witch and blunt with a dry wood and her children gazing on the hounded slave and that flag that the race and leans by the fence blowing and covered with sweat the twings that sting like needles his legs and neck the murderous buckshot and the bullets all these i feel or am i am bound i am the hooded slave i wince at the bites of the dog Hell and despair are upon me. Crack, and again crack, the marksman. I clutch the rails of the fence. My gore drips thinned with the ooze of my skin. I fall on the weeds and stones. The riders spur their unwilling horses and hold me close. They taunt my dizzy ears. They beat me violently over the head with their whip socks. Agonies are one of my changing garments. I do not ask the wounded person how he feels. I myself become the wounded person. My hurt burns livid upon me, and I lean on the cane and observe. I am the mashed fireman with breaststone broken. Tumbling walls buried me in their debris. Heat and smoke I inspired. I heard the yelling shouts of my comrades. I heard the distant click of their picks and shovels. They have cleared beams away. They tenderly lift me forth. I lie in the night air in my red shirt. The pervading hush is for my sake. Painless after all I lie. Exhausted, but not so unhappy. White and beautiful are the faces around me. The heads are bared of the fire caps. Kneeling crowds fades with the light of the torches. Distant and dead resuscitate. They show as the dial or move as the hands of me. And I am the clock myself. I am an old artillerist and tell of the fort's bombardment. And I am there again. Again, revile of drummers. Again, attacking cannon and mortar and howitzer. Again, attacking, sending their cannon response. I take part. I see and hear the whole. The cries and curses and roar. The plaintiffs for well-aimed shots. The ambulanza slowly passing and trailing its red drip. Workmen searching after damages to make indispensable repairs. The fall of grenades through the rent roof. The fan-shaped explosion, the whiz of limbs, heads, stone, wood, and iron high in the air, again grungles the mouth of my dying general. He furiously waves with his hand. He grasps through the clot. My mind, mind me not, mind the entrenchments. Tell not the fall of Alamo. 
Not one escaped to tell the fall of Alamo. The hundred and fifty are dumb yet Alamo. Hear now the tale of jet black sunrise. Hear of the murder in cold blood of four hundred and twelve young men. Retreating, they had formed a hollow square with their baggage for fight breastworks. Nine hundred lives out of the surrounding enemies nine times their number was the price they took in advance. Their colony was wounded and their ammunition gone. They treated for an honorable capitulation, received writing and seals, gave up their arms, and marched back prisoners of war. They were the glory of the race of rangers. Matchless with horse and rifle, a song, a supper, or a courtship, large, burdenant, brave, handsome, generous, proud, and affectionate, bearded, sunburned, dressed in the free costume of hunters, not a single one over thirty years of age. The second Sunday morning they were brought out in squads and massacred. It was beautiful early summer. The work commenced about five o'clock and was over by eight. None obeyed the command to kneel. Some made a mad, helpless rush. Some stood stark and straight. A few fell at once, shot in the temple or the heart. The living and the dead lie together. The maimed and mangled dug in the dirt. The newcomers saw them there. Some half-killed attempt to crawl away. There were dispatched with bayonets and battered with the blunts of muskets. A young, not seventeen-year-old, seized his assassin, twill two more come to release him. The three were all torn and covered with the boy's blood. At eleven o'clock began the burning of the bodies, and that is the tale of the murder of four hundred and twelve young men, and that was Jet Black Sunrise. Did you read the sea book? Did you read the sea books of the old-fashioned freight fight? Did you learn who won by the light of the moon and stars? Our foes was not skulk in his ship, I tell you. His was the English pluck, and there is no tougher or truer, and never was and never will be. Along the lowered eve he came horribly raking us. We closed with him, the yards entangled. The cannon touched, my captain lashed fast with his own hands. We received some eighteen pound shots under the water. In our lower gun deck, two large pieces had burst at the first fire, killing all around and blowing up overhead. Ten o'clock at night, and the full moon shining on the leaks and the gain and the five feet of water, reported the master at arms loosing. The prisoners confined in the afterholding to give them a chance for themselves. The transit, too, and from the magazine, was not stopped by the sentinels. They saw so many strange faces they did not know whom to trust. Our freight was afire. The other asked if we demanded quarters. If our colors were struck and the fighting done, I laughed, content when I heard the voice of my little captain. We have no struck, he composedly cried. We have just begun our part of the fighting. Only three guns were in use. One was directed by the captain himself against the enemy's manifest. Two well served with grape and canister silenced his musketry and cleared his decks. The tops alone seconded the fire with his little battery, especially in the manatop. They all held out bravely during the whole of the action. Not a moment cease. The leaks gained fast on the pumps, the fire and toward the powdered magazine. One of the pumps was shot away. It was generally thought to we were sinking. Serene stood the little captain. He was hurried. His voice was neither high nor low. His eyes gave more light to us than our battle lanterns. Toward twelve at night, there were beams of the moon. They surrendered to us. Stretched and still lay the midnight, two great hulks motionless in the breast of the darkness. 
our vessel, riddled with slowly sinking preparations to pass the one we had conquered, the captain in the quarter deck coldly giving his orders, through con countenance white as a sheet. Near the corpse of the child that served in the cabin, the dead face and old salt with their long white hair and carefully curled whiskers. The flames spit of all that could be done flickering aloft and below. The husky voice of the two or three officers yet fit for duty. Formless stacks of bodies and bodies by themselves. Dabs of flesh upon the masts and spars. The cut cordage and dangle of the rigging. The slit shock of the sleuth and w waves, black and immense guns, and a litter of powdered parcels, and the strong scent, delicate sniffs of the sea breeze, smells of sedgy grass, the fields of the shore, death messages given in the charge of two survivors, the hiss of surgeon's knife and the gnawing of teeth of his saw. The wheeze and cluck of the wash of falling blood, the short, wild scream of the long, dull, tampered groan, these so, these irretrievable. O oh Christ, my fight mastering me, what the rebel said, gaily adjusting in his throat to the roped noose, what the savage and stump of his eye sockets empty in his mouth sprinting, Whoops, the defiance that stills the traveler come to the vault mount of Mount Vernon? What sobers the Brooklyn boy for he looks down the shores? What burnt the guns of the redcoat, the Starigon, when he surrounded his brigades? These become mine and me, every one, and they are but a little. I become as much more as I like. I become a presence or truth of the humanity here, and see myself in prison shaped like another man and feel the dull, undetermined pain. For me, the keepers of convicts shoulder the cabin. For me, the keepers of convicts shoulder their carbons and keep watch. It is I let out in the morning and barred at night. Not a mutineer walks in his handcuffed to the jail, but I am handcuffed to him, and walk by his side. I am less the jolly one here, and more the silent one, with the sweat in twinching lips. Not a youngster is taken for larceny, but I go, too, and am tired and sentenced. Not a cholera patient lies in the last gasp, but I also lie the last gasp. My face ash-colored, my sinews gnarled, Away from me, people retreat. Askers embody themselves in me, and I am embodied in them. I protect my hat, and sit shamefaced and beg. I rise ecstatic through all, and sweep with the true gravitation. The whirling and whirling is an elemental within me. O oh Christ, what a fit is mastering me. What the rebel said gaily, adjusting his throat to the rope noose. What the savage at the stump of his eye sockets empty, his mouth spiriting whoops and defiance. What still the traveler come to the vault at Mount Vernon? What sobers the Brooklyn boy as he looks down at the shores of the wallabout and remembers his prison ships? What burnt the gums of the redcoat at Saratoga when he surrendered his brigades? These become mine and me, every one, and they are but little. I become as much more as I like. I become my presence or truth of humanity. Hear and see myself in prison shaped like another man, and feel the dull, uninterrupted pain. For me, the keepers of convicts shoulder their carbons and keep watch. It is I, let out the morning and barred at night. Not a mutineer walks handcuffed to the jail, but I am handcuffed to him and walk by his side. I am the less jolly one there, and more the silence one with sweat on my twitching lips. Not a younger is taken for larceny, but I go too, and am tired and sentenced. 
Not a coral patient lies at the last gasp, but I also lie at the last gasp. My face is ash-colored with sinews gnarled. Away from me, people retreat. Askers embody themselves in me, and I am embodied in them. I project my hat and sit shamefaced and beg. I rise ecstatic through all and sweep with the true gravitation. The whirling and whirling is elemental within me. Somehow I have been stunned. Stand back. Give me a little time beyond my cuffed head and slumbers and dreams and gaping. I discover myself on verge of unusual mistake that I could forget the mockers and the insults that I could forget the trickling tears and the blows of bludgings and hammers that I could now oh, that I could look with separate look in my own crucifixion and bloody crowning I remember I resume the overstayed fraction the grave of rock multiplies what has been confined to it or to any graves the corpses rise the gashes heal the fastening rolls away I troop forth replenished with supreme power, one of an average unending process. We walk with the roads of Ohio and Massachusetts and Virginia and Wisconsin and New York and New Orleans and Texas and Montreal and San Francisco and Charleston and Savannah and Mexico, inland and by the seacoast and boundaries lie and we pass the boundary lines. Our swift ordinances are in their way with their whole earth. The blossoms we wear in our hats are growth of two thousand years. Eleves, I salute you. I see the approach of your numbering gangs. I see you under yourselves and me, and know that they who have eyes are divine, and the blind and lame are equally divine, and that my steps drag behind you, yet go before them, and are aware how I am with you, and no more than I with everybody the friendly and flowing savage who is he is he waiting for civilization or past and mastering it is he some southwesterner raised outdoors is he canadian is he from the mississippi country or from iowa or oregon or california or from the mountain or prairie life or the bush life or from the sea Wherever he goes, men and women accept and desire him. They desire he should be like them, and touch them, and speak to them, and stay with them. Behavior lawless as snowflakes, words simple as grass, uncombed head and laughter, and native slow-stepping feet, and the common features, and the common modes, and emanations, they descend in new forms from the tips of his fingers they are wafted with the odor of his body or breath they fly out the glance of his eyes flaunt of the sunshine i need not your bask i lie over your light surface only i force the surfaces and the depths also earth you see to look for something in my hands say old topknot what do you want Man or woman, I might tell how I like you, but cannot, and might tell what it is in me, what it is in you, but cannot, and might tell the pinnings I have, the pulse of my nights and days. Behold, I do not give lectures or little charity. What I give, I give out of myself. You there, important, loose in the knees, open your scarfed chops till I blow grit within you. Spread your palms and lift the flaps of your pockets. I am not to be denied. I compel. I have stories. Plenty and more to spare. And anything that I bestow, I do not ask who you are. That is not important to me. You can do nothing and be nothing but what I will enfold you. To drudge of the cotton fields or emptier of the privies I lean on his right cheek and put the family kiss and in my soul i swear i never will deny him on women fit the conception i start bigger and nim babes this day i am jetting the stuff of far more arrogant republics to anyone dying thither i speed and twist the knob of the door turn the bedclothes toward the foot of the bed let the physician and the priest go home 
I seize the descending man, I raise him with restless will. O oh, despair, here is my neck. O oh, God, you shall not go down. Hang your whole weight upon me. I dilate you with tremendous breath. I buoy you up. Every room of the house I do fill with an armed force. Lovers of me, bafflers of graves, sleep. I and they keep guard all night. No doubt, no decease shall dare to lay a finger upon you. I have embraced you and henceforth possess you to myself and when you raise in the morning you will find that i tell you so i am the bringer help for the sick as they pant in their backs and the strong upright men i bring to you get more needed help i hear what was said of the universe heard it and heard the several thousand years it is middling well as far as it goes but is it all magnifying uh, and applying come i outbidding the start and the old cautious hucksters the most they offer for mankind in eternity less than a spirit of my own seminal wet taking myself in exact dimensions of jehovah and laying them away lithograph chronos and zeus his son and hercules his grandson buying drafts of osiris and isis belus and brahma adania in my portfolio placing Manitou loose and Allah on a leaf and the crucifix engraved with Odin and the hideous faced Mexitili and all idols and images honestly taking them all for what they are worth and not a cent more admitting they were alive and did the work of their day admitting they bore mites as four unfledged birds who have now to rise and fly and sing for themselves accepting the rough diaphec sketches to fill are better in myself bestowing them freely on each man and woman i see discovering as much or more in the framed framing in a framer framing a house putting higher claims for him there with his rolled up sleeves driving the mallet and chisel no object not not objecting to the special relations considering a curl of smoke or hair on the back of my hand curious as any revelation accepting the rough diaphect sketches to fill are better in myself bestowing them freely on each man and woman i see discovering as much or more in a framer framing a house putting higher claims for him there with his rolled up sleeves driving the mallet and chisel not objecting to special revelations considering a curl of smoke or a hair on the back of my hand as curious as any revelation those a hold of fire engines and hook and ladder ropes more to me than the gods in antique wars minding their voices peal through the crash of destruction their brawny lat limbs passing safe over the charred laths their white foreheads whole and unhurt out of the flames by the mechanic's wife with her babe at her nipple interceding for every person born three scathes at harvard whizzing in a row with three lusty angels with shirts bagged out for their waists the snag tooth hustler and with red hair redeeming sins past and to come selling all he possesses and traveling on foot to fee lawyers for his brother and sit by him while he is tried for forgery what was strewn in the ampest amplest what was strewn in the amplest stewing of the square rod about me, and not filling those square rods then? The bull and the bug never worshipped half enough, dung and dirt more admirable than, than was dreamed, with supernatural of no account? Myself, waiting my time to be one of those, the Supremes. The day getting ready for me when i shall do as much good at the best and be prodigious guessing when i am it will not tickle me to receive puffs out of the pulpit or print 
by my life lumps, becoming already a creator, putting myself here and now to the ambush womb of the shadows. A call in the midst of the crowd, my own voice or taunt sweeping a final. Come, my children, come, my boys and girls, and my woman and household and inhabitants. Now the performer launches his nerve. He has passed his prelude on with the reeds with himself. Easily written, loose-fingered chords, I feel the thrum of their climax and close. My head evolves on my neck. My music rolls, but not from the organ. Folks are around me, but they are no household of mine. Ever the hard and unsunken ground, ever the eaters and drinkers, ever the upward and downward sun, ever the air and the caressless tides, ever myself and my neighbors refreshing and wicked and real, ever the old inexplicable quarry, ever the thro thorn thumb, that breath of itches and thrusts, ever the vexers hoot hoot, till we find where the sly one hides and bring him forth, ever love, ever the sobbing quid of life, ever the bandage underneath the chin, ever the trestles of death, here and there with dimes on the eyes walking to feed the greed of the belly, the brains liberally spooning, tickets buying or taking or selling, but with but into the feast never once going, many sweating and plowing and thrashing, and then the chaff for payment receiving, few idly owning, and they the wheat continually claiming. This is the city, and I am one of its citizens. Whatever interests the rest interests me. Politics, churches, newspapers, schools, benevolent societies, improvements, banks, tariffs, steamships, Factories, markets, stocks, and stores, and real estate, and personal estate. Who they piddle and patter here in the collars and trailed coats, I am aware who they are, and that they are not worms or fleas, I acknowledge duplicates of myself under all the scrape, limed, pipe-legged concealments. The weakest and shallowest is deathless with me. What I do and say, the same waits for them. Every thought that flounders in me, the same flounders in them. I know perfectly well my own egotism, and I know omnivore's words, and cannot say less, and would fetch you, whoever you are, and flush with myself. My words are words of questioning and indicate reality. This printed and bound book but the printer and printing office boy? The marriage estate and settlement, but the body and mind of the bridegroom, also those of the bride? The paramour of the sea, but the sea itself? The well-taken photographs, but your wife or friend close and solid in your arms? The fleet of ships in the line and all the modern improvements, but the craft and pluck of the admiral? The dishes and flare of the furniture, but host and hostess and look out of their eyes. Sky up there, yet here or next door or across the way, the saints and sages in history, but you yourself? Sermons and creeds and theology, but the human brain and what is called reason and what is called love and what is called life? I do not despise you priests. My faith is the greatest of faiths and the least of faiths, enclosing all worship and ancient and modern and all between ancient and modern, believing I shall come again upon the earth after five thousand years, waiting responses from oracles, honoring the gods and saluting the sun, making fetish of the first rock or stump with the sticks in the circle of Obus, helping the Lama or Brahmin and the trims of the lamp of the idols, dancing yet through the streets in phallic procession, ramped and astray with woods and a gemosophist, 
drinking mead from the skullcap and Shasta and Veda's admirant, minding the Korean, locking the Tiakos, spotted with the gore from the stone and knife beating the serpent skin drum, accepting the gospels and accepting him that was crucified, knowing the assuredly that he is divine, to the mass kneeling, the Puritan's prayer rising, sitting patiently in a pew, ranting and throffing in my insane crisis, waiting dead-like till my spirit arises me, looking forth on pavement and land outside of the pavement and land, belonging to the winders of the circuits of circuits, one of the centripetal and confugal gang, I turn and talk like a man leaving charges before a journey. Downhearted doubter is dull and excluded, frivolous, sullen, moping, angry, and afflicted, disheartened, aesthetic. I know every one of you and know the unspoken interrogatories. My experience, I know them. How the flukes splash, how the contorted rapid and lightning and spasms spouts and blood. Be at peace, bloody flukes and doubters and sullen mopers. I take my place among you as much as, as among any. The past is the push of you and me and all precisely the same. And the day and night are for you and for me all. And what is yet untried and afterward is for you and for me all. I do not know what is untried and afterward but i know it is sure and alive and sufficient each who passes is considered and each who stops is still considered and not a single one can fail it cannot fail the young man who is dead and buried nor the young woman who died and was put by his side nor the little chicken that peeped in at the door and then drew back and is now never seen again nor the old man who has lived without purpose and feels it with bitterness worse than gall nor him in the poorhouse tuberculed by rum and the bad disorder nor the numberless slaughtered and wrecked nor the brutish caboo called the order of humanity nor the sacks merely floating with open mouths for food to slip in, nor anything in the earth or down in the oldest graves of the earth or anything in the myriad of spheres, nor one of the myriad of the myriads of inhabitants there, nor the present, nor the least wisp that is known. It is time to explain myself. Let us stand up. What is known I strip away, I launch all men and all women forward with me into the unknown. The clock indicates the moment, but what does eternity indicate? Eternity lies bottomless reservoirs. Its buckets are rising forever and ever. They pour and they pour and they exhale away. We have thus far exhaled trillions of winters and summers. There are trillions ahead and trillions ahead of them. Births have brought us riches and variety, and other births will bring us riches and variety. I do not call one greater and one smaller, that which is full period and place equal to any. Where mankind murderous or jealous upon you, brother or my sister, I am sorry for you. They are not murderous or jealous upon me, all has been gentle with me. I keep no account with lamentation. What have I to do with lamentation? I am an acne of things accomplished, and I am closer to, of things to be. My feet strike apex with the pieces, a piece. My feet strike apex with the pieces of stairs. On every strip, bunches of ages and larger bunches between the steps and below duly i traveled and still i mount and mount rise after rise bow the phantoms behind me afar down i see the huge first nothing the vapor from the nostrils of death i know 
I was even there. I waited unseen and always and slept while God carried me through the lethargic mist and took my time and took no hurt from the voted carbon. Long I was hugged close, long and long. Immense have I been pre pre the preparations for me. Faithful and friendly the arms that have helped me. Cycles ferried my cradle and rowing and rowing like cheerful boatmen. For room to me star stars kept aside in their own rings. They sent influences and took after what was to hold me. Before I was born out of my mother generations guided me. My embryo was never torpid. Nothing could overlay it. For it the nebula cohorted and an orb the long slow strata piled to rest in it. Vast vegetables give it sentience, monstrous sauroids, and transported in their mouths and disputed it with care. All forces have been steadily employed to complete and delight me. Now I stand on this spot with my soul. Span of the youth, ever pushed elastically, manhood balanced and florid and full, my lovers suffocate me. Crowding my lips and thick in the pores of my skin, jostling me through streets and public halls, coming naked to me at night, crying by day ahoy from the rocks of the river, swinging and chirping over my head, calling my name from flower beds or vines or tangled underbrush, or while I swim in the bath or drink from the pump at the corner or the curtain is down at the opera, or I glimpse at a woman's face in the railroad car, lightning on every moment of my life, bussing my body with soft and ballistic buses, noiselessly passing hands out of their hearts and giving them t to be mine. Old age superbly rising, ineffable grace of dying days, every consideration plumuggles not only itself, it plumuggles what grows after and out of itself, and the dark hush pungles as much as any. I open my shuttle at night and see the far sprinkled symptoms, and all I see multiplied as high as I can cipher edge, edge but the rim of the farther systems. Wider and wider they spread, expanding and always expanding, outward and outward and forever outward. My son has his son, my... And round him I obediently wheels. He joins with partners and groups of superior circuit, and greater sets follow, and making specks of the greatest inside them. There is no stoppage, and never can be stoppage. If I and you and the whole, the whole world and all beneath or upon their suf upon their surfaces and all the palpable palpable and all the palpable life were this moment reduced back to pallid float, it would not be avail in the long run we should surely bring up again where we now stand and as surely go much further and then farther and farther a few quadrillions of eras of a few octillions of octic oh, oh, sorry. cubic leagues do not hazard the span or make the imp impatient they are but parts, and things is but a part. Anything is but a part. See ever so far. There is limitless space outside of that. Count ever so much. There is limitless time around that. Our rendezvous is fitly appointed. God will be there and await till we come. I know I have the best of time and space, and that was never measured, 
and never will be measured. I tramp the perpetual journey. My signs are rainproof coat and good shoes and a staff cut from the woods. No friend of mine takes his ease in my chair. I have no chair, nor church, nor philosophy. I lead no men to dinner table or library or exchange. But each man and each woman of you I lead upon a knoll. My left hand hooks you around the waist. My right hand points to landscapes and continents and a plain public road. Not I, not anyone else can travel that road for you. You must travel it for yourself. It is not far. It is within reach. Perhaps you have been on it since you were born and did not know. Perhaps it is everywhere, on water and on land. Shoulder your duds and I will and I will mine and let us hasten forth wonderful cities and free no nations we shall fetch as we go if you tire give me both burdens and rest on the chuff of your hand and on my hip and in the due time you shall repay the same service to me for after we start we never lie again this day before I dawn, I ascend a hill and looked at the crowded heaven. And I said to my spirit, when we become the enfolders of those orbs and the pleasure and knowing of everything in them, shall we be filled with satisfied then? And my spirit said, no. We level th that lift to pass and continue beyond. You are also asking me questions, and I hear you. I answer that I cannot answer. You must find out yourself. Sit a while, wayfarer. Here, oh, here are biscuits to eat, and here is milk to drink. But as soon as you sleep and renew yourself in sweet clothes, I will certainly kiss you with my goodbye. Kiss and open the gate for your egress hence. Long enough have you dreamed contemptible dreams. Now I wash the gum of your eyes. You must habit yourself to the drizzle of the light and every moment of your life. Long have you timid, waited, holding plank by the shore. Now I will you to be a bold swimmer. To jump off the midst of the sea and rise again, and nod to me a shout, and laughingly dash with your hair. I am the teacher of athletes. He that by me spreads wider breasts than my own proves the width of my own. He most honors my style who learns under to destroy the teacher. The boy I love, the same becomes the man, not through derived power but in his own right. Wicked rather than virtuous, out of conformity or fear, fond of his sweetheart, relishing well his stake, unrequited love or slight cutting him worse than any wound cuts. First rate to ride, to fight, to hit the bullseye, to sail a skiff, to sing a song or play on the banjo? Preferring scars and faces pitted with smallpox over all lathers and those that keep out of the sun. I teach straying from me, yet who can stray from me? I follow you, whoever you are, from the present hour. My words itch at your ears till, the under till you understand them. I do not stay... I do not say these things for a dollar, or to fill up the time while I wait for a boat. It is you talking just as much as myself. I act as the tongue of you. I was tied in your mouth. In mine it begins to loosen. I swear I will never mention love or death inside a house, and I swear I will never translate myself at all, only to him or her who privately stays with me in the open air. If you would understand me, go to the heights 
or water shore. The nearest gnat is an explanation and a drop or a motion of waves of a key. The nearest gnat is an explanation and a drop or the motion of waves a key. The maul and the oar and the handshaw second my words. No shuttered room or school can commune with me, but roughs and little children better than they. The young mechanic clo is closest to me. He knows me pretty well. The woodman that takes his axe and jug with him shall take me with him all day. The farm boy plowing the fields feels good at the sound of my voice. The vessels that sail my words must sail. I go with fishermen and seamen and love them. My face rubs the hunter's face when he lies down alone in his blanket. The driver, the driver thinking of me does not mind the jolt in, of his wagon. The young mother and old mother shall comprehend me. The girl and the wife rest in the needle a moment and forget where they are. They and all would resume that I have told them. I have said that the soul is not more than the body, and I have said that the body is not more than the soul, and nothing, not God, is greater to one than oneself is, and whoever walks a furlong without sympathy walks to his own funeral, dressed in his shroud, and I, or your pocketless of a dime, may purchase the pick of the earth, and to glance with an eye or show a bean in its pod confounds the learning of all times, and there is no trade or employment, but the good young men following it may become a hero, and there is no object so soft but it makes a hub for the wheeled universe. And any man or woman shall stand cool and super colloious before a million universes. And I call to mankind, be not curious about God, for I, who am curious about each, am not curious about God. No array of terms can say how much I am at peace about God and about death. I hear and behold God in every object, yet I understand God not in the least, nor do I understand who there can be more wonderful than myself. Why should I wish to see God better than this day? I see something of God each hour of the twenty-four, and each moment then, and in the faces of men and women I see God, and in my own face in the glass I find letters from God dropped in the street, and every one is signed by God's name. And I leave them where they are, for I know that others will punctually come forever and ever. And as you death and you bitter hug of mortality, it is idle to try to alarm me. To his work without flinching the occur comes. I see the elder hand, pressing, receiving, supporting. I recline by the sills and the exquisite flexible doors, and mark the outlet, and mark the relief and escape. And as to you, corpse, I think you are good manure, but that does not offend me. I smell the white roses, the sweet-scented and growing. I reach the leafy lips, I reach the polished breasts of melons, and as to you, life, I reckon you are leaving of many deaths. No doubt I have died myself ten thousand times before. I hear you whispering, O oh stars, O oh heaven, O oh suns, O oh grass of graves, O oh perpetual transfers and promotions. If you do not say anything, how can I say anything? Of the turbid pool that lies in the autumn forest, of the moon that descends to the steeps of the sowing twilight. Toss the sparkles of day and dusk. Toss the black stems that decay in muck. Toss the moaning gibberish of the dry limbs. Ascend from the moon, I ascend from the night, and perceive the ghastly glitter of sunbeams reflected, and debauch the steady and central from the offspring, great or small. There is that in me. 
I do not know what it is, but I know it is me. Wretched and sweaty, calm and cool, then my body becomes. I sleep. I sleep long. I do not know it. It is without name. It is a word unsaid. It is any dictionary or utterance of syllable. Something it swings in more than the earth I swing in. To it, the creation is the friend whose embraces awake me. Perhaps I might tell more. Outlines. I plead my brother and sister. Do you see, O oh my brother and sister? It is not chaos or death. It is form and union and plan. It is eternal life. It is happiness. The past and present wilt. I have filled them and emptied them and proceeded to fill my next folds of the future. Listener up there, hear you. What have you to confide to me? Look in my face while I snuff the siddle of evening. Talk honestly for no one else hears you. And I say only a minute longer. Do I contradict myself? Very well then, I contradict myself. I am large. I contain multitudes. I concentrate toward them that are nigh. I wait on the door slab. Who has done this day's work and will soonest be through with this supper? Who wishes to walk with me? Will you speak before I am gone? Will you prove already too late? The spotted hawk swoops by and accused me. He complains of my gab and my loitering. I too am not a bit tamed. I too am untranslatable. I sound my barbaric yeep over the roofs and the world. The last scud of my days hold back for me. It flings my likeness after the rest and true and any in the swallowed wilds. It coaxes me, the vapor and the dusk, to depart as air. I shake my white locks at the runaway sun. I infuse my flesh in eddies and drift in the lacy jags. I bequeath myself to the dirt and grow from the grass I love. If you want me again, look for me under your boot sole. If you will hardly know who I am or what I mean, but I shall be good health to you nevertheless, and filter the fiber your blood. Failing to fetch me at first, keep encouraged. Missing me in one place, search another. I stop somewhere waiting for you.